Welcome back, everyone, to our third episode in our Let's Play series of the new early access game on Steam called Another Brick in the Mall. Now, where we left off before is we had built our second uh, area here. We built our second store, which we called Grocery, and we've got our first store, which we called Convenience. Now, those are only temporary names. We can change those at any time. In fact, we're going to need to change those because I've now realized with all the products that we have available that we're going to need a much, much bigger grocery store, even at the, here at the beginning of the game, because we have so many different products to offer that are in the food category, as well as the alcohol category and just things like that. So we're going to need a much bigger area. And so what I plan on doing is we're going to go ahead and get some research going. We're almost done with frozen food, which is great because I'm going to need that. Uh, in addition to our our new area, we're going to want to get the alcohol license taken care of. So again, that'll give us three additional products for our new grocery. And then you can see there are many other things going on. I wish I could really speed up this research in some way, but I can't for now. So we'll go ahead and and do what we can. So what do we want to do first? Well, I thought we'd start off by taking a look at our staffing at the convenience store. We've got one stock clerk and a couple of cashiers, and that gets us from beginning of our day at 6 a.m. through midnight with one cashier at all times. Okay, so far so good on that. Our staffing over at the grocery store is three cashiers, and basically we're setting it up to where during uh, the middle of the day, we have two cashiers. The rest of the time, we just have one. But you can already see, lines are backing up here. And we just got our our second cashier in, so that's going to help out. But we want to make sure that we don't let this get too far out of control. You can see here, we've already had four customers that have left because we simply don't have enough space for them. Well, that's a problem that I want to address. Let's see, it looks like our frozen food. We're gonna go ahead and, yes, go ahead and get back to the alcohol and get that taken care of. All right, so let's go ahead and look at, at this. Again, we're not terribly worried about our profit per day. Uh, right now, we're mostly interested in getting some things built so we can get several products out there to our customers and get them to spend more money with us and spend more time with us. Those things go hand in hand in this game. So if we can get these these folks to spend more time with us, then the better off we're gonna be. Now, my plan is to build our new grocery store much larger up in this area. So with that in mind, let's go ahead and get started building because that's gonna take quite a while to get done. We're gonna start off with road work and I'm gonna continue with our basic grid system that you see so far. And let's go ahead and get that up at least as far as that. And we'll see how much farther beyond that. Now, another thing I want to do is go ahead and put some customer parking in here. And let's go ahead and put that all the way across the front. And what that's gonna do by putting that in there now, that gives me a great idea of where I can start building my foundations. Okay, without that, I just have to guess where in here I can start building, but now I'll know exactly. Okay, we'll go ahead and let that take its course there and in this area, I think I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to sacrifice from profitability for the time being. And you can see it, th these people are just, they're backing up too much. So let's go ahead and take care of that. Let's go under manage for our grocery store, which is this area here. And you can see underneath on the bottom, it's trying to tell us the name here. And so instead of three cashiers, let's go ahead and change this around a little bit. Let's go ahead and hire an additional cashier and... Okay, I've learned a little bit more, and that's another thing I want to share with you guys in this particular video, is I've played a little bit off camera to try to get the idea of exactly what's going on in the game, figure out some things that I wasn't sure of. So now, one thing I am very aware of is the effect that patience and sociability really have on the cashier position. We want somebody with high patience because what that does is every customer has a timer of how long that they're willing to wait in line to check out. Well, the higher our, the patience of our cashier is, the longer that timer is. 
Also, the sociability of our cashier will affect our customer's mood whenever they check out. So these two things are going to be very crucial. Unfortunately, we don't have a whole lot to choose from here. So I'm going to go with speed because there's quite a bit of difference here in speed. So hopefully we won't need quite as much of those at the beginning. Okay, so now we have four cashiers. So my plan is to have two on staff at all times. Again, that's going to hurt our profitability, particularly at the beginning. But I think long term, it's going to be better for us to go ahead and set this in place. So we've got one coming in at six, one coming in at two o'clock. So let's go ahead and let's go ahead and have that like so and six o'clock there. So that's going to give us two for our entire hours of operation. Now, I'm not too worried about the zero to six time frame. We'll get to that at some time later in the research. My main thing is I want to get down to more products opened up so we can get additional stores and change out. Eventually, once we get a store built up top here, I want to change out these products and move all of that up to our new grocery area. Okay, so now that gives us our, we're going to have two people coming in at 6 and two coming in at 14 or 2 o'clock in the afternoon. So I think that's going to work out better. Let's come over to the convenience store. We've got right now just one coming in at all times. I'm going to go ahead and hire another cashier. And looks like this is far and away going to be our best option. Yeah, so we're going to hire. Yeah. Now, when do they come in? Well, I think it's best if we sort of work them out in the middle of the day. So we'll, we'll start with 10 o'clock. And another thing I want to do is put these guys back on auto salary. I've seen sort of what I can do there if I need, if I really need to save money. But for now, we're building. So I'm not going to worry too terribly much about, about salary. The main thing I don't want to have happen is that the satisfaction for these guys to really go down a lot, that would be very bad for me because it's going to slow down things overall. There's, the higher their satisfaction, the better they work and the better their other characteristics are. So we want to make sure that we keep that in mind at all times and don't, in the name of profits, sacrifice the, uh, the customer experience. Let's see what we've got. Okay, the queues are full over here. We've missed three customers. Let's see how we're doing overall. So we only had one customer here that left unsatisfied and is not coming back. Okay, that's, you know, again, you don't want any of those, but so far so good. Sales, you can see that's a nice trend line to the upside. And profit, again, is going well. Uh, and again, one of the reasons why I wanted to make sure is I want to avoid this for long periods of time. We've taken care of it for now, you know, particularly starting in tomorrow's work day because we've hired some additional people and so forth. And let's see how our builder is doing up here. Looks like they're doing OK, not quite as quickly as I would like. But again, I'm resisting the temptation to hire additional builders at this time. So what I want to go ahead and get started on is let's go ahead and do a foundation. And this foundation is going to be for our new grocery store, which, let's see, we can actually put, where do we want to start building that? Uh, customer parking is going to be here. All right, so roads going up through here, so it means our customer parking can begin there. Okay, that gives us an opportunity for foundations. And let's see, we want to start right here and that maximizes our use of space so what, do, what size do i want to make this well i think i'm going to make it about 28 wide which is big for what we've been doing and let's go ahead and slow this down a little bit since it looks like they've yeah they've caught up to us so let's go ahead and road work and customer parking and let's go ahead and run that up at least this far Okay, go back under manage, go back to foundations. And again, I think I'm going to go about 28 across and 14. So let's go. That's three, four, five, six, 
7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. All right, so I believe that's going to be about perfect right there. So let's go ahead and let them start building on that. And one of the things I learned, and if you looked at the release notes for the game, you'll see that the developer made a note that if you've got several projects that the builder is working on, you can stipulate what they work on at any given time by clicking on them and saying, hey, right click here and order them to build that. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and speed up some time. So I've go ahead and I had my builder come over here and work on this. So this should work out pretty good. We've got our parking in line. That's also good. A uh, couple other things that I learned. Number one, uh, at this particular point in time, it doesn't appear as though you can rotate any objects. Now, that might not seem like such a big deal, but what it does is it, if you'll notice your checkouts, whenever you place one, your customer line runs side to side here. Well, since you can't rotate, it basically means that you're limited in the layout options you have for your store. We already know that our customers use the bottom space below the uh, the various shelves and fridges, so we, we know we're, we're stuck sort of on a layout there. In other words, we can't put anything back to back because we can't rotate. We always have to keep these spots open. Same thing here. We can't rotate and have these run north and south, so we're kind of... You know we're kind of narrowed in on our on our options right now uh, which isn't great but I'm sure that's something uh, since it's fairly basic to rotate objects in games I'm I'm pretty sure that they'll have that in before too long because I can't imagine that they're not getting you know several emails so far about the lack of that particular feature also I have noticed uh, while all this building is going on that there's something kind of strange that goes on with your janitor. And we have right now, let's go up to our maintenance center and we have the option to hire a janitor. Well, right now we only have one and I'm going to be changing that. In fact, let's just go ahead and change that right now. And before we do that, let's go ahead and go ahead and move the starting hours here. Let's hire another janitor. And looks like this is our best option. Okay. And this new janitor, we're going to have them come in and work from six. And that way we have from opening to closing of our stores covered. Now, the weird thing that I noticed in all of this was, well, the janitors show up seemingly on time. However, they don't seem to stay around very long. It's almost as if they show up, they come into the maintenance center, and then if there's something to do, then they'll take care of it. Okay, they'll come over and they'll clean the floors and whatnot, but if that's all there is to do, rather than coming back in here like the builders do, they don't do that. They seem to just get in their car and leave. So it's kind of odd. I'm not sure if that's a bug or if there's something I'm doing wrong, but... Uh, it's just, it's pretty odd to, to notice that, especially when, uh, like we have now, we'll have somebody here from the beginning of the workday at 6 through midnight, which is the end of our workday, since we're not covering the hours of 0 to 6 in the morning. But we should have somebody here at all times when the stores are open. But that won't be the case, uh, at least based on what I've seen so far off camera. So, okay, we're doing pretty good building here. Let's see how our research is going. I really don't want to get into night hours right now. I want to make sure that as soon as the alcohol license is done, that we get moved on to bigger and better things. All right, so we've got builders working. Let's take a look at our profits and see how we're doing. Our parking usage is good. So far, customers are pretty good. We're getting more customers. We're getting more park, parking usage, more sales, which should mean more profits. And sure enough, it does. Yesterday, we, were, we made almost a thousand bucks 
Today we only made 574, so we can see there's already some fluctuation here from day to day. We'll have to see if maybe that rebounds back up or if it continues headed back down towards zero or even into the negative. Now, part of that, of course, is going to be because we hired more people. And whenever you hire more people, that's going to bring down your profit unless their production and sales can make up for that. So we're going to have to see that as time passes by. Let's take a look back at our research. Almost done with that alcohol license, which is good because I'm ready to get moving on the remainder of the foods in our new grocery area. But you can see right here, this is... We're doing good because the remainder of the items I see down here are not food related. So I believe this will unlock all of the food related items and allow us to move on to other types of stores, which are going to be important because as soon as I get my grocery built, I'm not going to want to keep all the grocery items in these existing stores. I'm going to want to branch out and change all this out, which once again, whenever that happens, that's going to hurt our profitability for a little while, but long term. It's all going to be very good for us. Okay, building is still going on. Let's take a look and see what our profit is doing. Oh, looks like our research is done. Let's come over and we do not want to do that. Let's go ahead and get started on chemical supply. Okay, so that should be all of our food items, at least until we get down into restaurants down here anyway. Okay, so let's go ahead and get that back going again. All right, so what are we gonna to wanna to do here? Well, as soon as this is done, one thing I'm gonna to wanna to do is, let's see how much room that we're gonna need for shelving versus how, many, how much room we're gonna need for these checkouts. In general, I'm finding that most of the time, I can get about 10 shelves per cashier. That seems to be a pretty good starting place. Now, of course, that's going to change as things move forward, I'm sure. But it seems like, you know, right now we've got eight shelves or fridges or however you want to look at it, eight sales units per cashier, and that's working out pretty good. But what I want to do is see if I can push that up to 10, because if I can push it up to 10, that's even more profit per employee, which is what we're after. And I'm not going to worry too much about absolutely peaking that profit per employee out uh, because you know that's gonna as we get bigger and bigger and more and more stores that's gonna entail uh, a lot more micromanaging which I'm just not necessarily interested in so things are going well up here in our building let's see how our profit is going we made five hundred and seventy four dollars yesterday and it looks like we're going to at least meet that if not exceed it today as we're at 20, going on 21, uh, the 21st hour of the day. And it looks like, yeah, we should exceed that. And we'll see how much higher it goes. Not bad, not bad. So we've, looks like we, we've reached an area where we're in this around 600 to about $900 per day of profit for the existing storefronts now one of the things we're going to want to do uh, whenever i start swapping out these products for our new for our new grocery store is i'm going to want to see if i can put an additional uh, sales opportunity here whether it be a, a shelf or, or whatever the a table something like that but we're going to want to try to maximize this as much as we possibly can All right, over here, let's go ahead. It looks like we can actually start to build some some objects in here, I believe. Uh, before we put our doors in, let's go ahead and we're going to put, we're going to need food shelves and fridges and maybe even a shelf or something. No, it's table because we got fresh fruits, vegetables, and bread that we can put on tables. Okay, so let's go ahead and actually start with our checkout counters. And let's see, where are we going to want to start with these? Let's see if I go, our first area is going to be there. So I think I'm actually going to start here and leave one 
one room there three and let's go ahead and go four there so you can see how the lines will be affected and how long those lines can get i think four is sufficient for this size but again we'll find out all right let's go ahead and put a wall down and let's see just like over here i believe we're okay because we've made this thing so much taller that I think we're still okay with five wide. Two, three, four, five. And let's go ahead and put that in place, build our wall. And with that in mind, we need to put some doors in. So let's go back to our objects and head up to the top. Double doors, we wanna put those right here. And then we're gonna put some at the back as well right there staff door we're going to put over in the corner and then we're going to put a couple of these in here to give our stocking person a couple of different options on how they're going to get out okay so let's start with our fridges and i believe we've got about 11 10 or 11 items for fridges so let's go ahead and start here one two three four five and i don't want to fill this up too much don't want to press my luck six seven eight nine ten and i'm going to put 11 up here i believe that takes care of all those products and then i want some food shelving and food shelf i think we're going to need a whole bunch so let's just go ahead and fill these up and we're leaving a little bit of room here to maneuver on this side of the store that will give us a little bit of room for growth in case we want to start expanding out a little bit okay so now we've got we're five wide on all of these areas except for the one at the top which we're now six wide on and let's go ahead and speed things up again don't want to hire any employees just yet. I want to make sure first and foremost that we've got everything in our layout the way we want it. And like I said, this gives us an area. If we if we use the math that I was using before, these 10 for one cashier, these 10 for a second, these 10 for a third cashier, and we've got four lanes uh, just in case things get busy and I need to add another person, even two if I need up here at the top all right so now we're starting to get some of our shelving and fridges in we'll let them go ahead and do that just a little bit more and then we're going to come in here and assign our storage which is in this area and then our storefront which is in this entire area okay that gives us we're going to come under manage here and i want to go ahead and assign storage so we're going to assign this area for the storage that tells our stock worker where they need to go and pick up our supplies and our opening hours are going to be at six closing is at midnight to match our other stores staff i'm, not, I'm going to hold off on that just for a moment let's come back into zone and we want to rename and call this big grocery for the time being that'll keep it separated from our other existing grocery which is currently right down here all right so there all right our builder is adding things in for us almost done with the facility itself let's go ahead and start putting products in here beverages let's go ahead and put soda and we're basically going to put every bit of the items that we can fit in here for this particular let's see beverages and if i can keep the cursor on it that gives us juices so now that takes care of all the beverages let's go into food ice cream and stay with me come on now milk dairy fresh meat and let's see if we're going to have the right number 
frozen vegetables. It looks like we are. Frozen pizza, which is always nice. And fresh fish. So we've got 11 different products that need to go in the freezer, and we've now got 11 freezers. Moving on to our food shelf, let's go and we've opened up the liquor so we can put that on the shelves now. We're going to put soda out there as well, bottled water. We've got beer up there, wine, juice. So we're flowing right along here. Now we're into the food. We're going to put candy and see how much room we've got and if we've got enough room for everything. Breakfast cereal and snacks for that aisle. Cookies, sliced bread. And now we've got sauces, rice, and coffee and tea. And it looks like, all right, pet food. So now we don't need these three. Okay, so let's go ahead and go back to build and remove objects. And we're going to put one X on each of these. And then we're going to come back into objects. And we are going to place down three tables. All right, so table here, here, and here. Okay, so let's go ahead and slow down time a little bit now that we've got everything we need. Not sure why they're not finishing that up. All right, so we want fresh fruits here, vegetables there, and the fresh bread there. So now we've got everything we need in place. So now it's time to come in and we need some workers. Okay, let's come under staff. Let's hire a, a store clerk. And let's see, I'll tell you what. Is that what I meant to? Yeah, the stock clerk. And do we have anybody? Wow. We don't really have anybody with very much skill on this. And it looks like this is probably our best at, option to hire Matt here. And Matt's going to come in at the beginning of the day. And we're going to go ahead and hire another stock clerk to come in at the end of the day. And we'll go ahead and hire them. I'm not sure if the sociability matters for our stock clerk. We'll go ahead and hire them and have them come in to finish off the workday. Now we need some cashiers. And once again, our pickings are slim, but I do like these two the patients and sociability here so we're going to have them come in at six hire another cashier and so 23 versus 25 mm. not a lot going on there that i particularly like i tell you what we, we want to have let's go ahead and fill up everything for now okay so that gets us one cashier in here for the entire day Let's go ahead and get some additional cashiers in. 31 versus 23. I think the better rating here will override the patients, but I'm not sure. Okay, so let's go ahead and have them come in at six. That gives us two at six. Hire another cashier. There we go. And she's going to come in at two o'clock in the afternoon. That gives us two cashiers here. But if you remember, we need three based on how I've laid this out and my guess as to how many uh, shelving units I need versus how many uh, checkout counters I need. So let's go ahead and get a couple of more cashiers in. Oh, I like these stats. Much better. So they're going to come in at six. And one final cashier. Again, not a whole lot to choose from right here. I'm hoping these options get better as we're able to expand. Okay, so this will give us three here at all times that were open during the day. That's what I wanted. All right, and if we go to our stock clerk, you can see we've got one here at all times. That is exactly what I wanted. Let's go ahead and get out of that. 
And it looks like we've got a bug here or something that they're not finishing this off. As long as it doesn't affect our profitability or anything, I don't know that I'm going to worry too much about that, which brings me to something else I wanted to point out, and that is the loading docks. As you can see, I've not designated any loading docks around this particular store, so it turns out you don't need a loading dock for each store. Now, it's going to be helpful, I'm sure, because right now they're having to travel from here all the way up. So it would be helpful to have one nearby, and we'll probably end up doing that. But in a crunch, if you're running low on space or low on funds or something, just keep in mind that if you can put these loading docks here in a centralized location, then you may be able to serve more than one location with a single loading dock. All right, one more thing I want to do. Let's see, so we're almost done there. So what was it trying to tell me with that? Interesting. All right, with that in mind, let's go ahead and I want to come back under manage. So we've got two janitors, one that's supposed to be here at all times. Okay, we've got three builders. So far, so good there. Let's go ahead and see how things work out for our, our shops. Here are three cashiers and our one uh, stalker is going to take a little while to get everything on these shelves, but that's to be expected. Now we've got, okay, so customers are coming in. It doesn't look like this little anomaly over here, this little bug is going to hurt anything. As long as it doesn't hurt anything, I'm not too terribly worried about it. So our stalker is doing the best job that he can in trying to catch up here. And we'll see how our profitability does. So already we're starting off a good bit lower and again that's because we have a new store and the second thing that it brings into question is the fact that we're offering the same products in two different stores well we're going to take care of that in our next video but for now I'm just trying to let this store get open once we have this open which will be throughout this particular day then we'll come back and in the next video we'll start to change out our products and so that we're not offering the same products in every store Okay, it looks like our stalker has finally caught up and gotten everything taken care of. Let's go ahead and fast forward things here. And it looks like traffic wise, we're doing good. As we're coming in toward the end of our first day in our new store, our new big grocery store that is. And I don't see any long lines. I see plenty of products, plenty of cashiers, and in general, plenty of everything, really. I think we're in good shape, and we're actually going to end up making a little bit of money out of all this, even with a brand new store opening up and the same products in each of the stores. All right, so that's excellent. And with that in mind, I think we're going to call it an episode here. Thanks for joining along for our third episode of our Let's Play series of Another Brick in the Mall.